Hi, my name is Lorraine Watry and welcome to my studio. I am a watercolor artist and I've worked with watercolor for 26 years now and I thought I would start a new series of videos where I go over different tips, tricks and techniques for working with watercolor and hopefully these short videos will help you in your journey and if you have a question or a technique that you would like to see please comment below and I will try to accommodate that in a future video. remove the mask how you should deal with um, the areas that are now white and sometimes can look very um, out of shape or maybe not clean the way you might want them and what to do on your painting to make it work with your painting so in general I like the um, masking tape better than masking fluid now although I still use masking fluid for certain areas because uh, the masking fluid can paint um, small little shapes like grass or um, round shapes sometimes it's a little easier to do that with masking fluid rather than trying to cut it out of masking tape so if you haven't seen the tip number two video, I will put the link um, in the upper right corner for you so you can go back and look at that one. And so this is a continuation and I am going to start by once I have removed the masking fluid, in general most of my lines need something. They either need to be um, cleaned up a little bit or um, maybe softened on some edges or I can go in and paint some color on them and sometimes I will do um, some of each of those things. So these tools are the tools that I use to soften the edges of a masked area. Um, I have this one out. I don't actually use this one anymore uh, because it's just a little too stiff for me and I don't want it to tear my paper. This is what um, would be listed as a scrubber brush and to me these bristles are too um, stiff for what I like to do. So I don't actually use actual scrubber brushes. I use, first of all, um, a flat brush that is small. And the flat brush is going to have bristles that are a little stiffer than your uh, round brush might be. So the round brush bristles are generally going to be a little softer and they won't um, be able to lift as well as um, a flat brush. The flat brush um, also is a synthetic brush and it is the Royal brand and uh, this one happens to be a number six but I believe I have a, an even smaller one and um, that's usually what I like is, is this one or a one that's just a little smaller. And then if this does not lift enough because it is a little um, not quite as stiff as this next one and so sometimes depending on the color you're using you can't um, get it to move as well so I will use uh, this brush and this one is a fabric flat brush and the fabric flat brushes have stiffer bristles and they are al also a synthetic this one is a number two and this brand is Dynasty fabric flat and I find these at my local art store, but you might be able to find them online. And they come in a two and a four, and then I, they also have a round version, but I like the, the flat ones. So to work on my masked area, I wet the brush and just kind of dab it on my paper towel, not taking a lot of water off because uh, these don't hold much water, and if you really um, dry it, it's going to take too much water off. And then just on that edge right there on the bottom, I might decide that I want to blur that edge just a little bit so that it's not as hard edged and it will feel like it's more a part of my painting. I could also blur this other end if I wanted to or I can extend it. I could blur all of the edges and I always work from the white side of my shape toward the paint. I guess I shouldn't say always, but most of the time. And sometimes I will turn my paper so that if I want to blur all of the edges it's easier to work with because I tend to push away from myself and it's just a gentle stroke I'm not trying to move a lot of the paint or make that shape a lot bigger but I want to soften those edges so that they're not not as cut out as these are over here and then I can also if I wanted to say on this circle 
there are a few edges that aren't quite as neat as I'd like them to be. I could use the flat brush to sort of clean those up as well. So if I'm using this brush, um, the paint that I have down is not uh, staining pigment, so I wouldn't necessarily have to use this brush, brush, but just so you can see, and it does make a little more sound on the paper because it's got a stiffer bristle. And so I can soften those edges if I want to and blur them a little more than so this other side is nice in focus and this edge would then be softened. And having lost and found edges in a painting, so lost edges would be those that sort of blur into the area around your watercolor um, or around a certain shape would um, make the painting more interesting for the viewer. So um, those are things that I might do. And then the other thing that I will sometimes do, to reach across here, is use not the right one. Let me grab. Okay. Is use a brush to clean up those edges. So I don't have my palette on the camera right now, but I'm going to get out some cobalt and a little bit of oriol and yellow because that's what I used. And just make a color that's similar to what I had used before. And I've used my palette since then. So, um, so say this circle is not quite as neat as I want it to be and I want to clean it up a little bit, I can make a pigment or use the, the paint that's on my palette that I used before and clean up that edge. Now sometimes what will happen is if you don't match the values exactly um, or your color is slightly different, if you put that color on it could leave a new um, kind of harder edged shape and so I will come back with water near the outside edge of that new uh, shape or value and soften that color into the area around it just by adding some water to the paper. So now I have cleaned up that white shape. I've added a little bit of value at the bottom, but then if you use water next to that, you can blur uh, that new um, watercolor into the area around it. Um, I'll do that again over here and I'll make it pretty dramatic this time. Instead of being close in color, I will use some blue and I'll just come next to the shape. So now I have this blue kind of shape next to that white shape that I want to blend into the green around it. So I can bring some water and right now I'm actually away from, I'm going to have to put the blue over that edge a little bit. I guess I don't have to, but I am. Okay, and then I'm coming next to the color I put on and letting it soften into the water that I placed near it. And by doing that, it makes it feel less like um, I made a mistake and put some darker color on there and more like, oh, that's just a darker area on my painting. Now, if that still is too dark for you, you can come in with some water and just gently stroke over the blue until it softens even more. Or you could come, you could lift and you could go back and make your mix again and try to get it closer to your background color. So there's a variety of options, but see I can blend that out and so it's even less um, imposing on there now. So then once I have the edges adjusted, whether I've cleaned them up with a brush or softened some of the edges or uh, cleaned them up just a little bit with a brush, you, the other option you can do right quick before I go to the next part is you can just take a brush with some water and sometimes just brushing over those lines with some water, you soften the edges just a little bit so that they aren't as hard edged and they feel like they connect to the painting just a little bit more. In general, I don't use this method because it doesn't quite do enough for me, but that is something that you can try if you wanna um, not have to go and do a lot of messing around with adjusting edges. So then once I have my um, leaf, say here, all cleaned up and I would have adjusted any edges I want to, I can go in and paint this. I can come in and maybe I'm going to make this a yellow leaf on here. So I will get some new gamboge 
maybe just a touch of some other color with it. And then I can come in and paint this and come right up to the edge. So my white shapes do not have to remain white. They can be painted and um, adjusted, but the mask is a way to protect a shape until you are ready to paint it. Okay, and I'll just get this on there. I'm using actually a little small of a brush to do this. I would probably be using uh, something more. This uh, is a number 10 brush. And that way I can work around this shape a little faster. And I'm just kind of being random with the lines and the texture and letting it be soft focus. And I actually went over the edge there. So if that were to happen in your painting, if you go over an edge like I did right there, it's actually better to go ahead and dry this completely, let it dry, and then come back with your brush and lift that little bit of color that went over. And I will do this other one with a little bit of some green. And so it doesn't have to re be a light um, object that you paint in. It could be something that is dark, but it might be something that you've masked because it is a smaller shape or something that would be hard to paint around if you wanted to um, put your background in first. All right, so I've got that in right quick. And then I wanted to show how um, if I were working on a painting. So these were um, places that, this was just a demo painting that I did and um, I never adjusted the edges. But if this was a masked edge, I actually would not have had, um, actually this one had color in it and then we masked this shape right here. Um, so I can come in for this one. That brush is not going to do enough as I mentioned before. And so then I can come in with a little bit of my um, flat brush and just a little bit of water and I can blur those edges just a touch so that it pushes this shape into the um, background a little more and softens those edges because I want the color there and I want the shape there, but I don't want that shape to be as important as it is right now. And so just by softening some of those edges, I can adjust what that shape is looking like and it will push it back just a little bit when it, the edges are a little blurrier. All right, so um, enjoy trying mask and give it a try because I find it very helpful. I know some people that don't like to use masking fluid, but um, for me it's just a tool that makes it easier for me to paint um, certain portions of my painting. But I also um, think that they need usually for those masked edges to be adjusted because they can look very hard and cut out. And thanks for following and please like and subscribe. Have a good day. Bye.